Welcome to the Emotionally Healthy Leader Podcast. My name is Rich Velotis. I'm the lead pastor of New Life Fellowship Church here in Queens, New York City. And I'm here with Pete Scazzaro. Pete is the founder of New Life Fellowship as well as the founder of Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. And we've been on a series of podcasts looking at different themes from the book, The Emotionally Healthy Leader. And we've covered things like slowing down for loving union. We've covered things like leading out of your marriage or out of your singleness. Today, we're talking about practicing Sabbath delight, practicing Sabbath delight. The Sabbath uh, delight has been a life changer and, uh, and a life preserver yep. for me uh, and our family as, as we have been in leadership. Uh, and Pete, this has been a theme that when we do conferences and what have you, yep. something happens in people when we talk about it's practicing true. Sabbath. Those three words though, um, practice, yep. Sabbath, delight. Can you just unpack each word there yep. um, before we go into some of the That's qualities good. of the Sabbath? Yeah, I, I, I think practice, one is, I think our, our, we want people to actually do it. I mean, as you know, many of us can preach it, teach it, talk about it, doing it consistently yeah. where there's a rhythm in my life of work and Sabbath, uh, that is the goal. And that's the life transforming uh, practice. Secondly, it's Sabbath, and we'll define Sabbath in just a few minutes. I actually take a 24 hour period where I Sabbath to the Lord our God. And thirdly, to practice Sabbath delight. Yeah, why did De you put that word there? Yeah, delight's the key word. I think delight, uh, there's many aspects of Sabbath, but delight is the core of Sabbath, where God delights in the very first Sabbath. He goes, this is very good. This is, and really, in the original Hebrew, one of my Old Testament prophets said, it's like saying, this is spectacular, this is wonderful, this is awesome. It's just an expression of beaming with delight. And that, that we, we, are, we are so delight deficient in uh, uh, among the leaders and pastors and churches that, that we associate delight with sin. And yet God is the author of delight. Uh, he's created this beautiful, wonderful universe and he gave us five senses. And, and we are to delight in the world. We are to delight in so many things, creation. It's all given to us as a gift. And Sabbath says, you know, Jesus says, you are not made for Sabbath. The Sabbath is made for you. It's a gift. And so if we miss delight, it becomes blue laws, legalism, uh, bondage and heavy, like, you know, it's a have to and a should. Yeah. But Sabbath, if you really taste the inside of Sabbath, it is pure joy. So there are many wonderful definitions about what the Sabbath, how people have unpacked it. You've landed on a pretty, very simple um, definition about the Sabbath. How would you define yeah. what is Sabbath keeping? So just a little history. In 1996, I began experimenting with Sabbath, reading stuff on it. And so I had moderate success up, you know, on, off, you know, starts and stops. But then in 2003, after our sabbatical, contemplative sabbatical, I said, this is a critical discipline and I, I got to get this thing down. And so, and I got to somehow bring it to our church. So I read everything I could, uh, written by evangelicals out there on Sabbath. I read, a lot, got into the Jewish writings, but I immersed myself and I basically simplified it to four uh, basic uh, principles or four words that, that we could use to create a container for our Sabbaths. One is stop, stop our work, stop our work, paid and unpaid, rest, do things that give us rest, delight, and then contemplate. Uh, by contemplate, referring to seeing the invisible God and all of the gifts of the visible creation. And that, that those four provided a kind of a framework on which each person, depending on your temperament, your personality, your life situation, uh, your age, all that, you could construct a Sabbath around these principles mm -hmm. that would get at the heart of Sabbath, not just the exterior practice. So uh, we'll unpack those in a, in a moment here. Why is it so difficult for people to even, for leaders specifically, yeah, yeah. to consider practicing the Sabbath? It's yeah. For many people that we talk to, it's, it almost seems like yeah, an impossibility to do yep. this. Well, and it's interesting because we, I think, as we've been in it now since 2003, I think in the last couple of years, um, it's become clear as we brought this uh, around the country and, and the world, because we would, I, I would observe that we would do a Sabbath and, at pastors and leaders conferences, it was almost like a power and principality got confronted. Yeah. And, I, and it was such a, so powerful, I, I remember just, we would talk about what is it? What is it about Sabbath that it's like people just get like delivered? And Walter Brueggemann wrote a book on that very theme, uh, and it all just came together for me mm. on how in the Deuteronomy command when God says, 
he invites us to Sabbath, and then he says, you're no longer slaves in Egypt. And he, he bases it on the fact that they were slaves for 400 years under Pharaoh, but now you've been set free. Mm. Uh, and free people, as you like to say, can rest. Yeah. And, and you gotta imagine, people don't, it's so, it's so difficult because for 400 years, their entire identity was in what, what they did, was yeah. in work. Our whole culture is built on what do you do, is work. So it's, as, it's in our bones. Jesus in your heart, grandpa's in your bones. Uh, Pharaoh's in our bones. Mm. And so when we talk about being, we've been, we have been set free from the evil one. And Pharaoh was considered a, a god in ancient times. And behind Pharaoh were demonic powers, keeping the people of God enslaved. In the same way, there are demonic powers and principalities that want to keep us enslaved, especially leaders. Um, how are we going to set other people free if we're not free? Mm. And so Sabbath is a declaration that I'm, I'm a free man, I'm a free woman. Yeah. Uh, and I belong to God. My identity is not in the size of my church. My identity is not in what people think of me. My identity is not in my work, although I love work and work is good. My identity is in the living God who loves me apart from my performance. So there is something as we engage in Sabbath, um, we tap into, I think, powers and principalities. We tap into significant yeah. shadows. Yeah. I think that's why I think it's such a large discipleship issue. And it takes a while to figure it out. Uh, but if we can get it right, that it's not legalism and it's not licentiousness where it's irrelevant, but it's a spiritual formation practice, and we can help people get that, it is so freeing and liberating. So you mentioned Brueggemann. Brueggemann talks about Sabbath as, so all you're talking about resistance, so yes. resisting the powers of principalities. Um, you also talk about, though, a Sabbath as revelation. Like yes. there's something, what, what, do you, what do you mean by that? That when yeah. we practice Sabbath delight, um, it's not just about resistance, yes. it's about revelation. You know, we learn about God in so many ways, right? We learn about God through scripture, obviously, and creation and suffering and relationships. But there is a revelation about God that comes in Sabbath. Uh, there are things that God can speak and, and, in, and impart to us that can only happen in Sabbath. Mm. Uh, for example, um, I, I think for myself, I mean, I can think of a couple things I, I've learned about God works when I'm sleeping, Psalm 127, Psalm 121, that I wake up and God's working. Hmm. You see, on, when Jesus says, my father's working to this very day and, I'm, and I too am working, that's when the Pharisees accused him of blasphemy in John chapter five because he was, he was claiming to be God. The Hebrews understood the only, the only person who works seven days a week is God. Hmm. People are being born, people are dying. God's keeping the universe moving. God's working on Sabbath, but we are not God. Hmm. We are humans, yeah. and so we are not to work on Sabbath with a rest in the Lord our God. And, uh, and so, I forgot your question though. So revelation, so there's oh, yeah, revel oh yeah, revelation. Yeah. There's a revelation about God being on a throne, and truths, when we stop and rest, it's almost like the soil. Remember God, every seven years would have the soil would not be, was not to be worked, it was to be fallow. Yeah. And because God would be instilling nutrients into the, into the soil in that year. In the same way, when we, we rest and Sabbath, God is putting things in us that we can't even see it. Yeah. Things are getting into our soil that otherwise just can't get in there. Mm. So there is a, in delight, so those four things, so when we stop, there's something of, of revelation, God reveals himself somehow when we stop. When we're resting, he reveals yeah. himself. When we're delighting, playing, yes. he's revealing himself to us. When we're contemplating, seeing the visible, uh, the invisible in the yes. visible, um, there's so there's revelation for us, and we're missing most of it. Absolutely, because <laughs> we're, we're working for God. <laughs> it's it's really it's crazy to think about. We're missing all of this revelation from God. So, a leader that's listening to this and watching this right now, they're probably uh, working eighty hours a week, let's say, <laughs> and working six and a half, seven days yes. a week, um, starting the Sabbath. Like yep. Pete, four hundred years, the people of God were in. Um, in slavery. Yes. I, I, I imagine that when, when Moses said, okay, everybody, today is a Sabbath. <laughs> it's hard for me to believe that they got it just like that. Yeah. And so it's hard for me to believe as well that folks that have been working for years, decades, families, generations are just going to get the Sabbath just like that. So what, what words of encouragement can you give to folks that are thinking about practicing Sabbath delight, They're, they realize I'm tired, I'm yep. exhausted, I'm irritable, I'm moody, this is being transmitted to the people that I'm close to. What words of encouragement would you give to those thinking about experimenting with Sabbath? We need an hour, you know that. <laughs> but I would say that 
and simple one, if you're if you have a day off, which is probably Monday for many pastors and leaders, I would transform that day off into a Sabbath to the Lord our God. And I'd begin to work with acts that's easy. Or it may be that your life is so busy and you know, out of control, you might want to start with 12 hours and then build up. But a Sabbath is a 24-hour period uh, that you want to move up to. I would say that's number one. I, I would say start with some simple wins. Secondly, is you want to figure out how can I create a container that fits for me. Now again, the Israelites didn't learn it overnight, right? I mean, if you look at scripture, it's clear it took a long time for them to figure out Sabbath. So give yourself a lot of grace uh, to figure this out. What's going to work for you? Because what's worked for you might not be work for somebody else. Yeah. Uh, and because we're all built differently. So it's going to take a lot of trial and error, and you're going to want to find, if possible, some support along the way. But I like the word container, uh, and this fellow's mentioned in the book, Todd Dethridge, and he's got a ministry out there in the, in the Mideast, and he learned from the Jewish rabbis in Jerusalem about Sabbath, which is, they, they create this, it looks like a legalistic container, but for them it's not legalistic from the inside. And when he would participate with them in Sabbaths, he realized, oh my gosh, this is like, wow. Like, because they had, you couldn't drive, you couldn't do this. But for them, the day has to be a different kind of a day. It's protected. Protected. So you got to figure out what's going to protect it for you, the beauty of Sabbath. And so for some, it might be no technology, it might be, um, I, I know for me, I don't do, and you, we both, we don't, we don't tweet or, or blog or do social media. Um, I rest from my paid and unpaid work. And, uh, and so I, I, I work hard to say, how's this day gonna be different than my other six days? And then I think through delight. Now, Jerry and I, we do it often, you and Rosie do, which is we'll light a candle. Yeah. You know, we'll do something to mark the day to have a beginning. And, and, and again, there's so much to learn from the Jewish community, the Hasidics and other Orthodox Jews, because they, they've been doing this for 3,500 years. So yeah. they got a lot more on us and uh, having a starting moment and an ending moment. And uh, so I would encourage you to take some first steps and we have found in our journey here at New Life that legalism has not been a problem because what happens is once people taste the joy of it, it just pulls them forward into it. Yeah. And, uh, but let, I want to encourage you, make no mistake about it, it's a very challenging spiritual yeah. practice to get firm in your life because there's so much pressure to work seven days a week. But if you can get, a, I think, a theological framework for it yeah. and resist the powers and principalities and see yourself as offering a gift not just for yourself, it's a gift to your church, and you're basically saying to, 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 to the world out there, hey, we serve a higher power, which is yeah. our great illustration of B&H. Absolutely, absolutely. And so, uh, actually, what we've done at New Life recently, and you can catch this on newlifefellowship.org, Pete and I just had a conversation on uh, frequently asked questions about the Sabbath. And our church, we're thinking about, uh, we have actually invited our church to consider one or two days of keeping Sabbath together as a community, Friday night, to Saturday night or Saturday night into Sunday night. And so we've been experimenting yeah. learning some new things here. And we found that as long as it's couched in, you don't have to keep the Sabbath. You get to keep it. Yes. It is a gift. It is a privilege. There's no two-tiered spirituality here, but it's a gift that God has for us. Um, so what are some final words? We stop, rest, delight, contemplate, um, a candle to start the day there. Uh, to start the Sabbath. Yeah. What's some, just a final word here for folks that are scared to death of stopping? Yeah. Um, well, you know, it has probably rightly been said that sometimes if we don't do it, God will do it for us, and he'll, he'll put us on our back, you know? <laughs> and uh, he'll just stop us himself when we get, we just, we're out of control. And I think you, I, I just, it's, we are, we're in this work because we love people, we love Christ, so we're all, in a sense, selfless giving out. And I think you deserve it. You, it's a gift. God knows that you were built for a rhythm. Your body and your spirit, your neurochemistry was built for a rhythm of working, paid and unpaid work, and Sabbath. Working and Sabbath. And that you will find, if you'll just trust God and begin to take some first steps, that you're, you'll, you'll, you'll rewire the neurochemistry of your brain, and God will begin doing some healing of shame that says you're not worthy. I used to feel, I, I felt, I used to feel like, if I have to get a Sabbath where I'm, I, I get the Sabbath, I get to be blessed and just receive from God. I have to, I got to work doubly hard to kill myself to deserve <laughs> such a gift. And that was touching family of origin issues. And you're going to find that healing and things are going to happen inside of you. Like I, I think it's happened for, for me, and I think for you, and I think for so many others as we engage in Sabbath, that. 
you are in for a wonderful surprise. Mm. Uh, and out of that, it'll be just so natural to give that out to other people. Yeah. So for more information, we've done a lot of work on Sabbath keeping over the past, you know, almost 15 years. So if you go to emotionallyhealthy.org, um, there are plenty of articles and uh, sermons that we've done on it. You should also go to newlifefellowship.org as well, as we've journeyed as a church family throughout yeah. the years in Sabbath keeping. So my, our goal and our hope is that you practice Sabbath delight this year. So see you next time. Thank you.